Drunks and drug addicts make bad boyfriends, bad husbands, bad fathers. I don't care how sorry you feel for him, walk. I'm telling you now, walk. There's something about us in our 20s where we think if I lose this guy, I'll never find another. It's okay. I was 20 once. You're clinging. <laughs> Cling film has nothing on you. If he drinks, he's not about a change. If he has a drug problem, he loves a substance more than he loves you, himself, or life. Or life. This is when you learn what kind of man you want in your life. This. You set your standards here. Because I still meet people who work for me and for some reason she's carrying a little strange paper bag to the office with her underwear and her clothes in there and I'm wondering, who the hell are you seeing? They won't even give you a shirt to come to work in? No, who are you seeing? You're lucky and also unlucky if you work for me because I look after my girls and I do not let them stumble. I don't. You need to tell yourself, are you going to date the kind of man who takes the time to take you to a restaurant or are you guys drinking in a car? You see, men, like us, are very easy. If you want to go to a nyama choma joint, he going to take you. And then one day when he's done with you, you'll meet his new girlfriend and you hear that they're always going to the intercon like, peleka. Yes, because, sweetie, you set the bar here. No, 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 it's your fault. It's not his. And it's always the guys who are like, Bonoka na shida. Wee skulizile tulkwati na date tulkwana nipeleka wapi. Na uyusiju na mfanyaje. And then you start telling your girlfriends how that chick is so bad. Can you see the way he has to buy a car? He has to take her where? He has to do this. Me, I was never like that. Atani Rudia, no. <laughs> no. And then you continue to hang out with the guys who are like, see, 200 jugonas. There's nothing wrong with jugonas. I go with my colleagues. I don't go on a date to jugonas. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? And for me, it's all about loving the fact that you're a girl, you are precious, you're a queen. And the only person who's going to define that and ensure that you're treated right is you. No one's going to do it for you. Guys take you the way they see you, by the way. You know, they're the ones who will be like, look at this chicken, look at this chicken, and brother be gone. No, it's okay. You go catch the other chick of how, how you can't pesa mingi. But the same guy put to task will work his head off to give the woman he's truly attracted to everything she wants. It's not his fault, it's yours. You need to learn to set the bar high enough for yourself in everything, which is where I talk about average. You and this average attitude and your average grades, you will get us an average degree. Come and give us some average interview at KISS 100 or KTN. Then we'll give you an average position with an average salary. You will drive a little average car. And then you'll get yourself an average man because me spending kusumbwa wa tu sawa. Yeah. You and your average man will get an average house. Me, I'm not materialistic. Me, evil. You will have some average kids and send them some average schools and the cycle will start again. No! Be done with average. And you know something, ladies? We pull society up. In a world where every guy is wondering, haven't these chicks done too much? You lower your standards. I'm telling you, forget Tikarod will never be finished. It won't. If you th look at your mothers and your aunts, those who get it, if you look at women who matter, if you look at an organization where the chicks actually are kicking, the guys are on game. Because they can't be outdone. And it's in everything. They'll take a loan to buy a bigger car than me. The fact that I bought mine cash is relevant. Which is good for all of us. But the minute as women, we begin to just, you know, lower it a little. He's a man. He can take it. He can. By the way, right, Samita? You can take it. Don't, don't lower the bar for anything, for anything, including yourself. Because at some point you wake up and you want more for your children. He's wondering, where should I go? Si ulikuwa sawa jana? Tulipokutana kukuwa hivi? 
When you start talking about children, you know that he's about to pop the question. He starts saying, I am thinking of three children. I definitely think they should go to Harvard. Yay. I guess about to start looking for a promotion. Trust me. Because he's not losing you, but he's also thinking with this chick, I can go places. You see, a lot of girls would tell you the lie. And the lie is, oh no, guys don't like chicks who want too much. Jay-Z could have married any maroon-haired woman from Harlem. He married Beyonce. She got tombs and she knows that it's made. Let's go. Let's go. It's Ted Turner and it doesn't matter where you look. When it comes to getting it done, guys are very clear. Really? And I hope one day Njoki will just, you know, kind of break the rules a little on sister to sister and bring a brother to tell y'all what's up. When you sit around the company of men, you sit there and you check yourself. I told everybody I stopped wearing trouser suits about six years ago because I was the only female in a man- management team of six. And I realized when I wore a dress to work, to my mandate management meeting, everybody's a little more, you know, cavalier and nice. I wore trousers like, okay, I come and see you to end it. You can't be like them. You can beat them at their game. But when it comes to this and men are visual, why is Smitter here? I'm so uncomfortable having this conversation in the presence of men. Men are visual, first and foremost. First and foremost. Deck out as you want to be addressed. The gray trouser suits, those things, burn them. They were worn by Kina my mother in the 80s, in the 90s. It was called the power suit. Uh, ugly thing. Get yourself some nice skirts. It hits the knee. That's the right place. Are we one day going to do proper attire? It hits the knee. If it goes a little below the knee, your leg looks shorter. It must hit the knee. Think about it. Hits the knee. Yeah. The length has got to be right. It either goes all the way down or hits the knee. That mid thing, it makes you look like your leg is this much. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. And never, ever arrive. There's something I hear women saying. Unajua mimi pale nimefika, minaona nikipata mtu anioe, alafu mi nikae home. Itakuwa sawa. Umefika wapi? Never, ever arrive. In June, I celebrated 10 years at KISS and I've only just begun. I've learned so much in the last three years. I've been thinking, what was I doing with this? What was I doing with that? I need to go back to school. I just finished a leadership course at Strathmore. I want to go to Harvard and do a leadership in women course. Blah, 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 blah. So like I said, catch me if you can. But meanwhile, never ever arrive. And ladies, don't forget God. A woman who prays is powerful. People wonder how you do it. A woman who prays has a powerful protector and doer. My prayer is so simple. It's a prayer of Jabez. Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. That your hand may be with me. That you will keep me from evil. That I may not cause pain. And the Lord heard Jabez and answered his prayers. Never forget to pray. And pray believing, not woye, believing he will make it happen. My prayers are with you because I believe in you in ways that drives me crazy. But what you can do to this country, to our lives, to how I'll retire in Cape Town, the roads you are about to build, the way you're about to streamline our judiciary, our businesses, our brands, the power within you is so scary. I hope you know what you got, because I do. Thank you.